this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. God bless. Love you. Hey everybody, God bless you. Man, we had a real great Bible study this morning. We talked about Romans 6 that says to be cardinally minded as death or be spiritually minded as life and peace. We talked about the fact is that we really did uh, dig down into the scriptures, the, the, the challenge of things that goes against all of us for the peace of mind. The peace of mind is it passes all understanding. And we, we, we focus on the fact that the last week that we're no longer under the law. You know, I love some people say they want the law. We have to have the law because we need these guardrails. And we already realize from history, those guardrails have fallen, have failed to keep us to do the right thing. But the guardrails of love, John 13, 34, so this is a new commandment I've given to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. So we, <laughs> we want to be able to start operating in love, man, love for one another. See, Romans 8 verse 1 said, there's now therefore no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. We even know the fact is that in, 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 the, in the scriptures that you're going to see in the Bible study, we even know the fact is that those are in the flesh cannot please God and that the laws of God are not subject to them. Oh, that's a marvel thing for people to understand. We try to put the law on people, but the laws of God is not subject to those who are in the flesh. Being carnally minded, you are not under the laws of God because you're already condemned. This is talking about having a eternal life in Christ Jesus. Those who don't believe in eternal life, they're already condemned. Those who don't want to believe in Jesus Christ, they're already condemned. But those of us who have received Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, we have eternal life. And we're not, we're not cardinally minded, but we're spiritually minded, and spiritually minded being word minded. So really take a look at the study that we did today, this Sunday, and I guarantee you'll love it. And the other piece we found out too, and I want to study a little bit more that I want you to study on with me as well, look into it so the next time we talk, is the difference between feeling and believing. See, John 3.16 says, To God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, to whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So he interested the fact he said, believe, right? And then we talk about feelings. And, and the fact is that sometimes we feel like something ain't right. We sometimes say we, we may believe some people, I believe people think in this way about me, but you don't really, you have nothing, your foundation of belief is not in believing in God, but believing in your feelings, and your feelings, in most cases, is based derived from your senses. And then if you go by your senses, and which means your flesh, Romans 7 said, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. So let's think about that and study that a little bit more. I want you to meditate on until the next time we, we have a study. Feeling versus believing. I really believe and believe in God, not believe in my ability, not believe in your ability, not believe in the world ability, not believe in man's ability. See, even we have a situation dealing with racism. <laughs> Somebody's believing in their flesh. The son that believe in the flesh, but the, the, the of superiority based on their white. Some believe in the flesh based on superiority of, the, of being black. Those beliefs has weak foundations. Believing in God has the power and the might of God. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you next Sunday. We also have Thursday night videos, a live session, so you're welcome to join there as well. Remember, we walk by faith, not by sight, and don't forget we love one another. Amen? Hallelujah. It was great study. Please take time to look at it. All right. Hope you enjoy the videos. Bye. <laughs>
faith in God's word and God's word not manifesting. Come on. That is the works. Yeah. God's God's power, God's word manifesting is the works. Come on now. Come on. That's the it's point. Not, it's not me doing something. It's God's work in me. In That's me. The work. So if if I say by Jesus Christ I'm healed, yes, sir. My faith, yes, is in that. And yes. if it doesn't manifest, then there is no works. Come faith on, without works is dead. I don't have to explain that right. because people get caught up in that, you know, because that's the first thing you say when you hear faith without works is dead. I got to do this, you know. I got to do whatever. Uh, my pastor tells me to do. I gotta go clean these toilets because faith without works is dead. <laughs> you know, I got to volunteer on on one of these these uh, ministries to support this church because faith without works is no. Yes, that has nothing to no. do with faith. No, no, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Is the evidence of things not seen. Now it's not you hoping for a home. Come on now. Come on. It's not you hoping for a car. Uh -huh. It's not you 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 hoping for worldly things. You are hoping for God's word to yeah. manifest in your life. Come on That's now. the things that you hope for. Yes, and sir. it is the evidence. Of things not seen because God's word is spirit. Come on, brother. Come on. When it manifests in this physical realm, then there is no need to hope anymore because it exists. It exists. Exactly. You at the end of your faith for that particular situation or circumstance. Come on. So there, this Bible has answers. To every area of your life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if, and and if no. you have the word of God, come out. It's a two-edged sword, which is your only weapon to attack the enemy, then you will not be able to resist the enemy because sooner or later you're going to fail. Yes. Because you, you your the faith is the shield. That's what's blocking. Come on. When you block, and even Jesus blocked, yeah. but he still used that sword. Come on. Come it was written. Sheen, sheen. <laughs> hey, look, look. So, Go ahead. so it's only then, after you subdue the enemy with God's word, can you tell him. To yeah. get behind me. Come on, sir. Come on. You, you can't just say get behind me. You say just all out the blue when you're being attacked. <laughs> and think that, that he's going to just move because it says he goes about seeking whom he may devour. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, look. Look at this. Other thing. The only power that Satan has is the power that God's given you. He's been defeated. He's powerless. He needs a physical body to operate in this physical world. And as long as you don't have the word of God in your heart yes. to defend yourself, to attack and to fight off the enemy, he's going to use the power that's within you to defeat you. Because yes. he can't use the power that's within him. Jesus took that. Out. He took it and then he gave it to us. Yes. And so he does exactly what he did in the garden. He, did. he takes the power and authority of that human yes. and he uses it to steal, kill, and destroy that human, which is what he did to Adam and Eve. Exactly. So he lets you use the word which Adam and Eve did not do. Right. 
which is the perfect example, that was their sin. Yeah, that was it. Because they say, as God said. It is our sin when we don't use the word. If we don't, yeah, you must rest on the word. That's your foundation, the word, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So I, I just, it, it, uh, it's, it's heartfelt when somebody is dealing with their feelings when it comes to walking this life, living this life, uh, uh, moving from faith to faith, because I understand, because there are times when the enemy comes at me and I'm like, wow, you know, man, I blew it. Yeah. You know, come on, I'm not perfect. I sit here and tell you, you know, I, 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 I do things, I say things that uh, really aren't becoming of a Christian. And if you catch me in that moment, you would say, ain't no way in the world this dude to say. Because I'm quick, sometimes I'm quick to anger. You know, yeah. and I'm looking at uh, Romans and um, the beginning chapters. It talks about people under the law and people under grace and, and, and Jews and Gentiles and how being circumcised ain't got nothing to do with nothing if you're not living according to the law. And being uncircumcised has nothing to do if you're living according to the law. So then if you are circumcised, saying that you are a child of God, basically that's all that was saying, and you don't live according to the law, then you're guilty of the law. You're, 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 you're worse off than the person who is not circumcised and is living by a law that they don't even know. It's just within them. Right. And so they are more circumcised than the uncircumcised. And the circumcised are just as uncircumcised as the circumcised. And I know that says a lot. No, but, but it's that, something that's been stirring up in me, right. you know, to, to actually grab hold of because it's like what we've been talking about, loving your neighbor is something that I think is very, very, very important. I mean, it's the second most important law. Exactly. You know, we, we've just thrown that in, into the bucket, the, 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 the fruit <laughs> juice. Of being a Christian and it it just been mixed up in there to the point where it has no precedence, no, no priority. Exactly. exactly. But it has mentioned by Jesus Christ Himself that these are the two <laughs> that culminate all. Right. So if it's that important, and if you want to fulfill the law, you must. Fulfill these two. That's and the only point. way you can feel, fulfill these two is through Christ Jesus. Yes, and sir. so and the only way you can do it through Christ Jesus is by examining the gospel yes, of sir. Jesus Christ and learning how the Old Testament are types and shadows of the new. You uh -huh. pull from the old to help you get an understanding of the new. Yes, 